Look at Proverbs 6, verse number 12. We're going to see, because this is extremely wicked. It's an extremely wicked person that's going to go in and try to destroy a church by sowing discord. And you need to be aware of this and watch out for the people who are going to go about and try to do, try to sow discord in, in whatever way they try to do it. Usually it's by gossiping, slandering, trying to spread rumors, and just trying to say something to, to get people, or even just, just bringing to light someone's sin. And I'm not talking about some grievous sin that needs to be dealt with as a church. I'm just talking about some sins that... Hey, everyone's got a sin. You don't need to be just broadcasting and, pub and you know, publicizing everybody's sin to, to, to tear that person down. Proverbs 6, look at verse number 12. The Bible reads, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually he soweth discord. Again, this is referencing a person that devises mischief continually. Someone who's a wicked person, a bad person. Not someone who's just confused. Not someone who's misunderstood. We're talking about a bad person that comes in and sows discord. Verse 15, Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and look at this, and he that soweth discord among brethren. It's an abomination in the sight of God that there would be someone to come in and sow discord to try to destroy the unity that a church is having or even just that brethren have between each other, the fellowship, the, the, the unity that's there, someone that comes in to sow discord. The Bible says in Romans 16, you could turn there if you'd like, Romans chapter 16. It's that great passage, at the, the last chapter in the book of Romans where he's going through and talking about saluting all the people that, that he's worked with and, and you know, say hi to this person and, and this person helped me much and be sure to greet these people. And you know, he's running down the list of all the people. But when he's getting through with that list in verse number 17, because he's already marked all these people that have been good people that have helped him out along the way, now he comes along and says in verse 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions. Mark those people that are going around and sowing this discord and getting people pitted against each other and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Mark the people that cause division and have nothing to do with them. Avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. These people only care about themselves, is what verse 18 says. They serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. They don't care about Christ. They don't care about the cause of Christ. They don't care about the brethren. They care about themselves. They use good words. They use fair speeches to deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, not everybody that gets deceived is a bad person. But they're simple. As I went over last week, simple means stupid. It just, you know, they're ignorant. Maybe they're babes, okay? They're very simple. They don't understand much at all. We don't want to be simple. We want to be simple concerning evil, but wise concerning good. Now, um, I, the reason why I'm going into all of this, I normally stay out of stuff that's not our business. I don't like getting involved in other matters with other churches. We're an independent church. Yeah, that's right. We're run here. What really matters is what we're doing here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But when issues in other areas spill over into our church and start having an impact, here, specifically because of specific people or whatever that are, that are starting to bring an issue here, then I need to deal with it here. 
So the issue that I'm referring to is what happened with the Steadfast Baptist Church in Jacksonville. What ended up happening is that there is the, you know, Adam Fannin ended up pitting the people against each other there. And he was pitting himself against the, the leadership that was coming in and causing discord that a church basically split in half. A church that was doing good works for the Lord, that was going out and soul winning. And there are many people there that love God and want to serve God. And the church ended up being split. Now, I haven't said anything about this publicly just because, hey, it happened. It's their business. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there are people that have gone along with what I'm going to which, which what I believe is rebellion. And it's very clear to see what happened. And I have a little bit of, of you know, direct dealing too, because I spoke with Adam Fannin personally for a couple hours on the phone the day, the day that he had his conversation and the whole blow up and they kind of split apart. So um, I'm not just some total outsider not having any you know, intimate inf information on what's happening here. I've, I think I have enough information to judge appropriately on what happened over there. And I could tell from the conversations that I had with him that his intent, while he gave lip service to wanting to be someone, oh, I'll do whatever I have to do. If I have to step aside, it's not about me. It's about you. Know, yeah, those are the right things to say. But that's not where his heart really was. And that was evident to me on the phone with him that he really wasn't willing to do those things because every time I said, well, you know what, maybe the right thing to do is going to be, you know, are you really willing to do that? And it's always just something else. Well, no, I want, you know, well, the people here, they want to ordain me. Well, you yourself said that you're not ready. You yourself said that you shouldn't be ordained. So why even bring that up as an option? I'm not going to go through all the details of that. It doesn't matter. What I want to point out, though, is first of all, if you don't know the situation very well, that church in Jacksonville was not independent. We are an independent Baptist church. We have nobody, no other affiliation or tie in any way to any other church. There is no authority structure where we have an outside authority governing our church other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the authority for this church. And then, uh, and that's it. So if some other church doesn't like what we do, it doesn't matter. They could not like it. There's a lot of people that don't like what we do or don't like what we believe. And they do their own things and, that, and whatever, right? We're going to do what we're doing here. And, uh, but that church, just so you understand, that was not an independent church. Now, it was a separate church because there was a local congregation in Florida versus a congregation in Fort Worth. But the authority, it was not independent by authority. It was not independent financially. It was reliant on the church that was planting that, that was starting that church. Very important concept to understand. Now, you may disagree with the method in which a church was planted, but that doesn't change the authority of structure in which that church was planted. So whether or not you, you like the way that some churches are started without pastors and then they get a pastor and then they become independent, doesn't matter. I mean, you could have your own belief on that, but the way that this church was started, not this church, but that church, the church in Florida was started was under the authority of another church, of another pastor that gave them all the direction and was overseeing what they did there. So the person who was running things who was ordained to be an evangelist. An evangelist in the Bible is someone who wins souls. Someone who goes out and preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's their job. Because he had the ability to also teach people, he was doing that job. And the intention was that one day he would be able to pastor that church, but he wasn't ordained to pastor that church. And see, one of the ways that he was trying to be manipulative and beguile people was he kept on saying, well, I was ordained to start this church. You were ordained as an evangelist to win people to Christ, bring people together, but you were not, if you were already ordained to pastor that church, then why aren't you the pastor? 
because you hadn't been ordained to pastor that church. You are submitting yourself to the authority of the sending church. So by breaking off, by talking amongst all the people and saying, we don't want to have this guy over us. We don't want to have this church ruling over us anymore. Let's split off. You're, you're in rebellion. Now, it would be one thing if you said, wow, our sending church has totally lost its way. They're teaching work salvation. They're teaching some damnable heresy. Then I can see splitting off and saying, we don't want to have any part with that. But that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. There were some minor doctrinal differences that came about. And we're talking, look, this is not some big, this is not some reason to rip a body in two at all. And if the person that was leading was genuine and sincere in their service to Christ, they would recognize that there's a body here that I'm going to try to help stay together and not try to sow this discord and split us apart. Because when you split the body apart, it causes even more damage, even further destruction and, and disruption to the cause of Christ. And now they're, they're starting over. There's going to be a lot of people that, that are impacted by this that didn't have to be.